Good morning. Today we are going to be sharing some important facts about early explorers. We'll be exploring the life of Leif Erikson. It's a, this guy that is here. So, We're checking a video to know a little bit more about this. The story of the first explorers to North America begins with an ice age that changes the Earth's landscape around 23,000 years ago. As the ocean recedes, it opens up a land bridge or plain between Asia and North America, where the Bering Strait is located. People living in the northeast region of Asia start to cross over the newly revealed land in their hunt for food by following migrating animals. Around 15,000 years ago, some nomadic hunters follow the glaciers along the west coast, heading southward. As the glaciers recede and the land bridge starts to disappear, the nomadic hunters move inland towards the south between the two major glaciers, creating settlements along the way. Around 11,000 years ago, the rising ocean covers the land bridge from Asia again separating the continents. As the hunters travel south, they head in different directions. Some continue to move further south, while others move toward the center of the continent, continuing eastward until they reach the east coast of North America around 9,000 years ago. However, these first nomadic Asian hunters are not the last to explore North America. Around the year 1000, a new group called the Vikings arrive on the east coast looking for a new place to settle. They are the first Europeans to set foot in North America. Sailing from Northern Europe, they settle first in Iceland, then in Greenland, and continue going west until they settle in the northern region of what is now Newfoundland. They build a settlement at Anso Meadows and encounter descendants of the original group of nomadic hunters from Asia, now called the First Nations. Eventually, the Vikings abandon their settlements because of opposition from the First Nations. Yet they keep going back for natural resources, such as timber and fish, until the beginning of the 14th century. In 1453, the Ottoman Empire takes over Constantinople and blocks the trading route to Asia from the east. By the end of the 15th century, Europeans are tired of being blocked or having to pay taxes to the Ottoman Empire to go to Asia. Therefore, they start traveling westward, looking for a new passage to Asia. These new European explorers to North America are quickly disappointed that they have not found a route to Asia, but are amazed by the number of fish, land animals, virgin land, tall forests, and precious metals that they have found. As those European explorers return to Europe, telling tales of bountiful riches in the New World, more and more Europeans, some fishermen, geographers, cartographers, and fur traders, mainly from France, England, and Spain, funded by their king or queen, travel to North America. They built settlements all along the East Coast, acquiring natural resources and doing trade with the First Nations. By the mid 17th century, streams of sailing vessels leave Europe, carrying people trying to escape overpopulation, famine and disease to the new world, looking for land, riches and a new life. But that is another story we will cover at another time in another video. The present So yes, Christopher Columbus was not the first to come to America. There were other people. And one of them, as you just heard, was Liv Erikson. Okay, so who was Liv Erikson? There's this handsome man that is here. He was a Norse Viking explorer. Norse are the people that come from Scandinavia, from Norwegian. He is best known for being the first European to have set food on North American soil, along with his crew, 1000 CE. He founded Vinland. That was a long time before Christopher Columbus set food on America. He was nicknamed Leave the Lucky. He was very lucky, they thought. He is the son of Eric the Red. Eric the Red, you will see soon, was the first 
founder of Greenland. Have you ever heard of that? It's to, over there, now very close to North America. So now let's check in on some information about Leif Erikson and his family. Today, we're rowing back to 1000 AD, a time when fierce Vikings roamed the sea. Not only were these Vikings fierce warriors, but they were also excellent explorers. In fact, we're gonna learn about a Viking named Leif Erikson, a great Viking leader, an explorer who discovered the Americas almost 500 years before Columbus. Columbus has long gotten credit for discovering the New World, but back in 1925, President Calvin Coolidge announced that Leif Erikson discovered America. Eventually, Leif Erikson's hey, day became a holiday. It's Leif Erikson Day! Ding -a -ding -a <laughs> the U.S. celebrates Leif Erikson Day every October 9th. But who was this great Viking? Well, the Viking story starts in Scandinavia. Not so different from many explorers, the Vikings were looking for new lands to conquer. They used their Viking longships to spread across northern Europe, Britain, Iceland, Greenland, and eventually Canada. A lot of the information we have about Viking exploration comes from Viking sagas, which were written around 1200 AD. These likely consisted of Viking oral traditions that were passed down for generations. Now, the story of Leif Erikson starts with his father, Eric the Red. Eric was living in modern-day Iceland, and one day he got into an argument with his neighbor. Things got a little heated, and Eric ended up killing this unlucky neighbor. After committing such a horrible act, Eric was forced to flee with his friends and family to a new land. His loyal Viking horde sailed west until they reached Greenland. Now, this journey was no easy feat. Eric and his Vikings would have had to sail farther north than the doomed Titanic, which would eventually hit an iceberg and sink. Greenland was a cold place, like a frozen desert, with little vegetation or trees. Now, Eric strategically chose the name Greenland to make it sound more like a pleasant, not icy place to live, so other Vikings might be tricked to moving there. Now, here's where Leif Erikson comes into the story. There are two versions of the Viking story about how Canada was found. In one version, one of Eric's friends was blown off course and came close to an uncharted land. Now, in another version, Leif Erikson was the one blown off course. He was on his way back from Norway, where he had served in a Viking court and had been converted to Christianity. He was bringing the Christian faith to Greenland. Regardless of which version is true, Leif was in Greenland, and he was beginning to become a leader amongst his Viking peers. He knew about an uncharted land to the west, and he gathered a group of Vikings to join him on an expedition to this new land. They set out on their ships and landed on a frozen glacier. They called it Helu Land, or Slab Land. Here, Leif likely met a group of natives and was successful in trading with them. Now, Leif wasn't very satisfied with this frozen land because he was looking for something that was more of an upgrade from Greenland. So he took a different route to North America, and the second time it paid off. He landed in a place that was beautiful and covered in wild grapes. So he called it Vinland, or Wineland. Here, Leif was able to load his ships with these grapes and with strong timber for building Viking ships. Modern science has since backed up the Icelandic sagas and the story of Leif Erikson discovering the New World. Multiple places in Canada contain artifacts dating back to 1000 AD, when Leif would have taken his voyage. This includes evidence of smelted iron ore and Viking-style longhouses that wouldn't have been attributed to the natives that resided in the area at that time. Leif Erikson and his happy band of Vikings didn't retain a permanent settlement in the New World, which is probably why he rarely gets credit for discovering America. But as society continues to question the past actions of Christopher Columbus and celebrates Leif Erikson Day, it's likely Leif will begin to be featured as the discoverer of the New World by history books. Uh, hi, Patrick. It's Lee Day. Hey, thanks for So that's true. We saw that the Vikings came to North America long before. So they came from Scandinavia, they went through Iceland, Greenland, and finally North America up in Canada when they found the Inuit, perhaps. And then they came down to uh, what is now USA, and they founded something that was called Vinland. So he visited North America about 500 years before Christopher Columbus. And once he got back to Iceland, he never went back to America. Hmm? He must not have liked the vines that he found there. 
people believe that he landed in Labrador or Newfoundland, both places in Canada. Some other people believe that he came a little bit down actually where USA is now. So what was he looking for? Well, he was in a budget to spread Christianity. That's why he came all that way long from where he's coming. And he traveled through fierce seas. It's believed that Liv Erickson went off course on a trip to Greenland. And there from Greenland, he leaved Nova Scotia. So he found this, grapes. He sailed to America from Greenland and called it Vinland because of the wild grapes he found. So it's the land of vines or wine. This it's actual a Nordic house, a long house of the way that they build it in Scandinavia. And it's still there, you can visit it. So scientists have found these sites that would really let us believe that he did come. And the data of these elements tell us that it was 500 years before Christopher Columbus. So scholars have found evidence and it's proven that Vikings visited and settled North America first than any other European, including Columbus. So that's why they have a leave Erickson Day and it's a national celebration or holiday. And it's celebrated because of a presidential proclamation Remember the name of the of the president? Coolidge. Don't forget it. Okay, some celebrate Leif Erikson Day by enjoying Norwegian food. They make seafood or rice pudding or some Norwegian cheese. And some others celebrated with ceremonies promoting Nordic American heritage, like riding on big Viking boats or making fights and the way of Nordic people. And some others celebrate Leif Erikson by going on a new adventures like surfing or going climbing a mountain or buying lottery tickets because remember he was called Liv the Lucky. So they believe that he will bring luck that day. So how did the Norse travel? They came on boats. This kind of boats are known as Viking boats. They're narrow and long. And you can check on them back in some places like in a museum. I will let you know about this museum. So come with me to visit the virtual tour of the Vasa Muset or the Vasa Museum, which is located in Sweden in Stockholm. Over here, as you can see, it's the museum itself. And over here, it's the harbor where they found a sank a boat, a biking boat, very, very old, and they decided to recover it. But it was very fragile. It had many, 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 many millions of years there. So what they did was they built the museum around the boat. That's why it's big and it has this shape. You will see the inside.
so you can continue. So here you will see how they did it. They just build the museum around this huge, amazing boat they found. So this is the boat. They recovered it, they took it out of the water and they built it that, that same place. Just build the walls around it. And believe me, it's a huge, beautiful boat. If you ever get the chance, don't doubt visiting Stockholm in Sweden, the Vassam you set. So here you can see the front part of the boat. And we will go all around through the different galleries that are built around the boat. And it has many interesting information and it has several articles pending on it. You can check it on and you can even go on the boat. And then you will discover how life was about it. It's a huge, amazing, well-preserved boat. Let's see the boat from the top. So you can see there the mast where the sails will be shown as well as all the robes and gathering that they had. This piece that you see here, that lion, is part of the front part of the boat, which was taken out and set as a private gallery and you can see all the people visiting there and there you can go in on top of the boat and once you get in you can check out how was the life inside of the boat you can see the people there they were fighting they were drinking they had big cannons to for protection and they had many other working with ropes, of course, and there were many little galleries on it where people there were rowing, cleaning, and just living in that big boat. So I invite you to go visit the Vasa Museum. You can check this virtual tour by yourself and you can also, and so you can see more, or one day plan a trip to Sweden. I'm sure you will love it. So I will leave the invitation for the Vasa Museum. And that's all folks. See you next class.